Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 405. Another in a series of frequently asked questions, questions that men or women ask us. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. This week, we're going to be talking about questions that women regularly ask. And the first of those that we want to discuss is, can I take testosterone pellets if I am not menopausal? And the answer to that is yes, but okay, the so. backup for the <laughs> so the backup for the answer on that is yeah. that most women should start taking testosterone pellets in their forties, which is usually before menopause, okay. and that is because we run out of it in our forties, and we should replace our hormones when we run out of them. That keeps us young and keeps us healthy, rather than waiting years to replace it, and then have our health decline before we get our hormones back. Yeah, you said in your book that the uh, the secret female hormone, mm-hmm. that there's kind of a 10-year window. If you stop, if your body stops making its natural supplement of, of hormones, then there's about a 10-year period where you can get it back and avoid some of the illnesses that come as a result of not having it. Right, the ten-year uh, windows. But if you wait longer than that, you can't get those things back. And we can't we can't get them back as in make them anymore. But mm-hmm. we have to supply them back with as bioidentical as we can a hormone that looks just like what we used to make. And we have ten years from the time that we become clinically symptomatic of clinically symptomatic of a hormone loss. Like one, the first hormone loss is testosterone loss. We become clinically symptomatic. We get symptoms of no sex drive, and we get really tired, and uh, we have migraine headaches that worsen. Those kind of things happen when our testosterone drops. The next, we should replace it then. The next hormone is progesterone, Mm -hmm. and when periods become uh, really long and heavy and when people get PMS, that's when progesterone drops. We should replace that then. And then estrogen is usually the last thing. And then estradiol is what we miss when our ovaries completely go kaput. And we should replace that within 10 years to avoid all of the diseases of uh, aging. So if a woman isn't yet menopausal, but she's having these kinds of symptoms, Mm -hmm. especially the PMS, Mm -hmm. if she replaces just the testosterone, will that prevent any more PMS or does she need the testosterone and the progesterone? Well, testosterone will improve her PMS, but it won't make her make more progesterone. Okay. So so what happens when we're in our 40s approaching menopause, and it, they call it perimenopause. It really has nothing to do with estrogen. It's before our ovaries fail, so they could call it periovarian failure, but they don't, um, is when, t- so testosterone drops, then PMS gets worse, but we still make some progesterone. After that, The progesterone, sometimes we don't make any at all Mm -hmm. in a month, and that gives us really bad PMS, and testosterone won't fix that. It needs both hormones. And if a woman doesn't have a hysterectomy, Mm -hmm. goes through menopause, Mm -hmm. and gets her testosterone replaced, Mm -hmm. then she will need to take uh, something to prevent bleeding. And she won't still cycle, but she'll occasionally bleed? Well, let's, if some, if some, you're half right. Okay. If if a woman if a woman comes in and, and goes through menopause, she'll have to take progesterone if she doesn't have a hysterectomy. If she takes estrogen, okay, just with estrogen. So there are three that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. So and estrogen estrogen stimulates the lining of the uterus, mm-hmm. causes it to um, to thicken and sometimes become abnormal. So we give progesterone with it to prevent that. It's a preventive measure. Mm -hmm. So if you have a uterus and you go through menopause and you lose your estrogen and and you get it back in a different way, you have to take progesterone in some form as well. So, uh, But testosterone, you don't need progesterone. Menopause means what, basically? That you are not going to be releasing eggs anymore? That you're not going to have babies anymore? You're not fertile. No more periods. No more eggs. 
that you have been a year after your last, your last day. period. Your last period. Okay. Basically. All right. And your last period. Yeah. But you, if you replace the testosterone and the progesterone, mm -hmm. they're, they're still like... Uh, You're still making estrogen and eggs. Right. But you may not... So if you aren't making progesterone, you're probably not ovulating your eggs. You're just making the egg and the estrogen, but it's not popping out. So I'm sorry to ask those questions so, because I'm sure all the women know it's that. It's very complicated. No, Men they don't. don't. <laughs> I don't think they do because it's it's complicated. It's right. kind of a gynecology question. Okay. So it, But it's important to talk about because these are the questions that I answer in my office. So, so if a woman comes in then and she says, okay, I'm getting close to menopause and I'm having irregular cycles mm -hmm. and I'm having changes in the flow and, and I'm having mm -hmm. these emotional reactions and I'm exhausted. And mm -hmm. How do you determine a dose? If, if you say, okay, you know, I think you would benefit from taking testosterone mm -hmm. uh, and maybe progesterone, maybe mm -hmm. estrogen. Maybe we'll just get a whole mm -hmm. package for you here in the same mm -hmm. pill. We'll put them in the in same, the same time. pellet. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how do you decide how much to put in? That's a good question. Part of it starts with training and, and then the rest is experience. So I was trained that um, with, with testosterone, about well, they last four months, okay? So you need a certain amount of, of testosterone every day, and a, a, an average dose would be 150 milligrams, okay? That was what we were told. Average dose that would cover four months would be 150 milligrams, if you were using a certain size pellet, which is 100 milligrams. This is why the pharmacy is so important. Right. I've had the same pharmacy since I started. So that's been 16 years. And it's very important to know that your pellets are going to last a certain amount of time at a certain dose. So you use a compounding pharmacy yes. that will make these to your prescription. Right. Okay. And so, and the, I have kept the same compounding pharmacy, right. and they have been the same for the last 16 years. Right. So that's important. You don't want to have ha, go to a doctor who's just getting whatever's cheaper that month. But, and so you have sort of worked out average doses for the mm -hmm. size and weight and age and, and mm -hmm. so on of the woman. So they have these ready that right. they make for you mm -hmm. in, in quantity. But mm -hmm. if a woman, for some reason, you decide, okay, like, for instance, I was in your office the other day, and mm -hmm. the nurses were chatting in the back room. Mm -hmm. They were talking about this woman that had been complaining about uh, not having enough lubrication, and they decided that she didn't get enough estrogen. Right. So when she came in this time, they were going to put more estrogen mm -hmm. in the pills. Right. And they think they got the dose right, and they said, we think we're where we need to be, mm -hmm. but the way that you will know the difference is you will have breast tenderness. That's how you'll know it kicked in and that you have more estrogen than you had last month. Okay. Because breast tenderness means that your your breasts haven't been exposed to that much estrogen. It'll go away. It just, yeah. It's just, just a, a sign. Surge and back off. Right. Just is like, okay, we're on board. We yeah. have this. Right. So that's just But a that's sign. all part of the whole dosage thing that yeah, you have it's, to regulate it's and figure very, out. It's um, very... It's very intuitive, and mm -hmm. my nurse practitioners and my and other doctor and I are skilled and intuitive. <laughs> but we yeah. start with a basic dose for both for mm -hmm. women and and men. And men's last six months, so women's are four months. Sometimes we can stretch it out, but we start with that basic dose. Then, if they smoke, the dose goes up because they use it up more. If they drink a lot, the dose goes up because they make more estrogen and they drink they drink. Uh, and if that I drink also, more, will I make more estrogen? Yes. Oh. Yes. I'm in trouble. Yeah. 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 Well, that's one of the reasons that good old boys that drink a lot of alcohol have yes. a big old beer belly right. and man boobs. Yeah. Because they're drinking so much, they're that's overwhelming right. their liver, they're making a lot of estrogen. Or, and they're, or they're converting testosterone to estrogen. That's what I mean. Yeah. They're converting their testosterone into estrogen. Yeah. And that estrogen makes them have man boobs and a, a big belly. And then the big belly makes more estrogen. It's really hard to stop it's unless you change their drinking and and also uh, use uh, testosterone pellets. Okay, so you put these pellets in. Whatever dose you decide on, you discuss. I, and so, so the dose is basically a dose for four months, and we, we, we use 100-milligram pellets, and we cut them and throw away part of them for l lower doses. Oh, okay. Because there are certain doses that... The compounding pharmacies, by law, can't make. They can't make 75 milligram hmm. because that's made in a pellet for men called Testapel that has a brand. 
So they can't make that dose. So we just get... <laughs> so they own that dose. So they the own that name. dose. Okay. So, <laughs> silly, but they... So we get hundreds and we cut them down so we can get... Out of two 100s, we can get 200 or we can get 175 or we can get 150, 125, but we throw away the rest. So the pills are made... Uh, t- pellets, pellets are made... So that you, if if you cut off a quarter of a pellet, that's twenty five percent of the dose. Right. It's it's it has the same. The dose is the same throughout the, density throughout yeah. the pellet. Okay, I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what makes it possible for us to do that. So that so that's that's one way to figure out dose. I mean, we look at how how big you are. If I have a woman who comes in who's six feet tall and weighs two hundred plus pounds. She's going to need more than somebody who's my size. Well, I know when I go in to get my pellets, they usually break one of them mm-hmm. to get that in my system faster mm-hmm. because the my my usability curve you, is, you, is a little faster. So right. when I get to the end of my four months, mm-hmm. I'm needing it more. Well, we could give you more, but your wife said no. <laughs> <laughs> she wants me to be on that curve. Like that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm just... <laughs> I'll speak to her. When yes, I go you home. can speak yeah. to her. You know, yeah. so um, so that's so so dose is something that is is it's an art form, part and of the, the art of this of this. Yeah. But you also have to know how you metabolize drugs. We have to know all the drugs you take because more than three other drugs that go through the same uh, system in uh, in the liver can bl- kind of speed it up. So you you. You know, go through all your drugs and your pellets faster. Mm-hmm. Or if you ha- sometimes that, it's really funny. It's hard to tell some people. It slows them down. It clogs it up basically. It's so it has to, to do with their metabolism, the other medicines they take, mm-hmm. and their stress levels. Stress levels, their size, their activity levels, how many hours they sleep. We ask all these questions, and we put this into our own brain. We don't use some kind of a calculation because. Then when you come in and I ask you questions about how much, you know, if you have to take Tylenol, do, is one Tylenol going to do it? Do two, you right. know, does that do it? That helps me figure out how fast you metabolize drugs. So um, I can make it switch at the very end <laughs> just because my brain has now put all this information together and I've decided to change the dose mm-hmm. after we speak. Okay. And then you you put these pellets in and they you and part of your calculation is how fast a woman me, would metabolize them yes because it's an on demand system within the body so mm-hmm. as she needs it the body will pull it from where the pellet is located in mm-hmm. in the fatty tissue of her hip mm-hmm. so you part of your calculation is i put enough dose in there for 4 months mm-hmm. and then if toward the end of the 4 months they run out. She runs out of it. She starts to have the symptomology mm-hmm. come back. Then you discuss with her when she comes in because she'll say, "I, you know, just lost it, it the last month. Out. I've been exhausted. <laughs> I'm miserable." Yeah, yeah. So, so that's the next part. The next part is I have to do a trial. That first dose is a trial, mm-hmm. and then I have to do a trial to see and what happened with this particular patient and individualize it to her. So you so follow she that says, data, though, anecdotally. I, I come in and you mm-hmm, ask me, mm-hmm. but you also do a blood test yes. and a follow-up? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I see what your level is. So so say a woman comes in and ideally her blood level at the end of three months or three and a half months will be 15 and up of free testosterone. So if it's eight and she says, I feel great, then she's just she just doesn't need as much. She's more sensitive to it. Okay. So I don't give her more because of the blood test saying it's it's eight and not fifteen. I don't go. Oh, you need more. I say, well, how do you feel? I feel great. It's so, just so starting would to wear she off. She be thinner, shorter. No, I can't even. I have no know. way okay. to measure this, and I wish I did. Yeah. I mean, if I did, then I would be the queen of pellets. <laughs> it would be. I mean, this is the hard part. It's. Here we put all this thought into figuring out a dosage, mm-hmm. and then we try it. And then all of a sudden, they they feel good on a level blood level that I didn't think they'd feel good on. Well, I remember we had a conversation a year or so ago about this elderly woman that came in to see you. She was widowed, mm-hmm. and she was having a lot of symptoms, no energy, putting on some weight. Her bones were brittle. I mean, Migraines. Things that she mm-hmm. 
didn't want to have. Mm-hmm. But she very clearly said to you, I'm a widow and I'm very religious and I don't want to have a sex drive that's going to make me uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So how do you titrate that to help this lady get a minimum of what she needs without giving mm-hmm. her something she doesn't want to have? She was um, she was somebody who needed estrogen. Mm-hmm. And she'd had a hysterectomy, so I didn't need to give her progesterone. But she didn't want much testosterone. So there I had to go really low and just give her a tiny bit. And then and then and I told her that, that yeah. we were trying this. Right. Hopefully that wasn't going to make her have a sex drive she didn't want. Right. So we tried that and then she said and then she said, So I didn't feel anything. <laughs> And of course, her hot flashes were gone, and her, yeah. her vagina wasn't dry and itchy, and her skin looked better. So that was a perfect dose, right? Yeah, that was the estrogen dose, yeah. but the testosterone part, you know, she didn't feel anything. So I'm like, okay, so we had to inch it up, mm-hmm. and if she got to the point, you know, normally I'd say, if you get to the point where this is bothering you, then we'll stop. And so, so we got to a point where she could tolerate it, and we stopped going up, but it was much lower dose than I would give anybody else. And it didn't, honestly, it didn't take away all her symptoms. Right. So I was caught because you it find the always point. gives you a sex drive. Yeah. I mean, you. Well, I would say I, I always, was, but there's no always in medicine. I had a couple of clients that mm-hmm. you and I shared, a married mm-hmm. couple, and they were coming to you. And one of the issues in their marriage was she had no sex drive. And it wasn't that she didn't love this guy. She loved him desperately, mm-hmm. but she had no sex drive. And... He was really frustrated about that. So she came to you and she got pellets. And she called me three or four days later. And she said, oh, my gosh, I'm looking at the mailman. I'm looking at the clerk in the grocery store. I warn patients I'm looking that haven't at my had husband. testosterone in a long you know, time. She said, am I, am I going to be out of control? Am I going to be able to regulate myself so that I don't do something embarrassing or damaging? Of course. And I said, of course, absolutely. <laughs> you, know, you haven't felt this in many years. Mm-hmm. And now you are feeling it. You are conscious of it. But it doesn't drive the bus. You drive the bus. And so mm-hmm. you won't do anything that you don't want to do. But you will feel that awareness and that arousal. Mm-hmm. And so that's the balance point and with this woman, yeah. this elderly mm-hmm. woman that was widowed, mm-hmm. who didn't want to have that sort of contamination in her life of feeling feelings that she had no place to go with, that she right. didn't want to, to have. Right. And but, she and she didn't want to do anything else. But she didn't right. she didn't want to sin. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, you're being delicate. She didn't want to I, masturbate. Yes. She didn't yes. want to, she didn't want anything to do with sex. She was finished with that in her life. Right. But, but she But needed, most people feel like that when they don't have any testosterone. <laughs> yes. Well and that's an interesting distinction yeah. to make. Most people feel like they don't want to have sex anymore if they don't have any. I right. mean, it's very chemical whether we want to have sex or not. Right. If we have enough testosterone, usually we do. <laughs> and so for me it was just getting enough of her symptoms to go away and still not make her unhappy about her sex drive. And so you over several visits Yeah, we it took us more con- more um adjustments with yeah. her than it would with normal pa- patients. They kind of come in First, the first dose is my estimate of what I think they should have. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, the dose is right, not always. And then I ha- adjust it, and then we've got a maintenance dose for the next year. So they don't have to keep coming in and seeing me and readjusting things. So so you, you say four months is the typical mm-hmm. time range, and you put these pellets in, you mm-hmm. figure out the dosage, they have the pellets. At the end of the four months, are they completely empty? Is the reservoir dry? Okay, good question. At the end of four months, you still ha- the, a woman will still have pellets left. They're very small, and they're not giving us enough testosterone to last longer than the four months in our in our symptoms. In our we call it clinically, we aren't feeling them anymore because they've dropped the blood levels drop below that level which we need. Okay. So so clinically, we're not feeling that. Or personally, we're but not feeling. There's it. a chemical residue there's, still. There's some still there. little bits of pellet. Yeah. In that, in the hip, and they mm-hmm. are there for two more months. So where, where do you put them? You, we say in the hip. Uh, right. We say, also, we put we put in women. We put them in the upper outer quadrant of their hip because in general, women have fat there. Okay. And we've never really had to. We've never had to uh, deviate. Mm-hmm. That's where we go with women. With men, men have fat in their love handles. Mm-hmm. And they have, and we use the fat in their hip. I've even put it 
put them at the bottom of their buttocks only by request by one doctor who wanted it there. Uh -huh. And then I said, you're going to regret this. And he did. <laughs> so Don't you like it when you're right? I know. But I mean, he said, well, I stand up all day operating. Yeah. And I said, well. You sit more than you think. You sit more. Yeah. yeah and it's going to hurt when you lie down. And I mean, yeah. he had some in both buttocks. I mean, yeah. it was not good. But he was, <laughs> he knew what he was getting into. And he, I mean. But six months later. I wouldn't he, do he that in anybody that. else. Yeah. He was a physician. He knew. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, so right. he, just, he had to wait six months to really feel. Yeah. Uh, he felt better, except for that part. So, so for, I've seen in other, I've seen people come in who've had pellets elsewhere that throughout their abdomen, they have these little tiny, in fact, most people make bigger incisions than we do. We make two millimeter incisions. Right. I mean, two millimeters. So that's a fifth of a, of a centimeter. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. So it's tiny, but they had bigger ones, like four millimeters oh, wow. little, all over their belly. And I'm like, what was that? You know, and they said, well, that's where the last doctor put my pellets in the subcutaneous fat of their abdomen, sure. which most people don't have, don't have a lot of fat under the skin above the fascia and the muscles. There's not, I mean, I need about uh, three quarters of an inch of fat to, to bury the pellets so you don't feel them. Right. And I don't know why they did that. Most of you our fat in our belly. below the skin that I can't touch the Right, that location, we can't feel it. Now, feel the pellet. there are some really skinny people. You can feel their pellets. Right. And they rub them. And they go, I'm going to have a little extra testosterone today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's. Does that help break them down faster? Yeah. Or? yeah when you rub okay. them, you bring you blood flow it. to them. Yeah. And they dissolve in the fat. So we have to have them in fat. You can't put yeah. them anywhere else. Okay. So that's, so that's the. The idea of how we make our decision where to go and how fast they dissolve. And we try not to leave any scars. So, and that's, in most people, that's doable. Yeah. So th these presentations are presentations of real questions that real people ask on a regular basis. And we episodically or periodically will bring to you another elucidation of those. And so today we've been talking about five of the frequently asked questions that women ask when they come in to get pellets. So hopefully you will have learned something from that and tune in when we revisit this topic again. Thank you for, Thank you. for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.